Got it. We should be live. Okay. And then I get to push my. We're making this happen. It's going to be great. Boom. Okay. And. Up, 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 up. Sorry. Welcome to Uber Meme. Uh, I'm Andreas Exertis. I'm here with Raphael, and we've got Rayo. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yes, Welcome it is. to the show. I'm calling it Uber Meme. It's kind of a working title. We might come up with Naropa. I don't know. You guys come up with ways you want to describe our uh, our intellectual morning uh, session as I'm considering this because it's before the evenings. Anyway, Rayo is all about self liberation. He's talking to us right now from the uh, ghost laptop, right? The ghost book. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, the ghost pad. Yep, the so uh, privacy hardened is... uh, laptops. Yeah, so explain a little bit about that. I'm going to open up a page on it, but what is the, uh, the ghost pad? <laughs> Yeah, so so basically, the premise behind it is that anything you anything you purchase off the shelf, um, it's uh, they all have at least laptop wise, they come with something called Intel Management Engine, and these things are basically second computers that you have no control over. Um, they can turn on any, they can take over your your entire computer essentially. Um, so one of my my buddies, uh, Jamie Baconic. Um, he's been hardware hacking these for like 20 years. Uh, now, there's only a, you know, a handful of these things that you can actually do it to. Um, a lot of times when you take out that management engine, it actually breaks the laptop so you can't use it. Mm. Um, so uh, he's been he's got, I guess, a, a, a few models available now. And uh, has, I guess his newest one is um, this uh, content creation ghost pad that I have. Um, it comes with uh, G Ubuntu and the, I guess the Ubuntu Studio or whatever. So it's like a free and open source, like all video creation, um, content creation um, laptop on a you know, privacy hard laptop. So um, yeah, we offer those uh, over at libertyinterdact.com and uh, his website, uh, yeah, ghostpad.net. And, so explain uh, explain um, that really yeah. quickly. Like, so why can't I just use Kali Linux or why can't I just like have a, a secretive? Yeah, what yeah. do I have to do to have a, a safe laptop? What's going on that you need to? What's the the deep mm -hmm. um, deep hard hardware part that you're changing? Yeah, yeah. So um, essentially, uh, and the way that I like to explain this is that like, yeah, you could you could put Linux on any, you know, like on any computer, I guess you put it on a lot of devices too. Um, but if you don't own the hardware, if it's not, you know, this open source privacy respecting hardware, um, it's going to be spying on you. Anything else off the shelf um, is going to, it's, 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 it's going to be ratting you out and and uh, doing all, all sorts of things. So um, yeah, what's significant about these is that uh, that management engine um, is taken out. You actually have you know full control over your computer. Um, it's not like uh, I had this laptop from 20, this Windows laptop from 2013. Um, there's like a thousand apps that open up on startup and I can't turn them off. Um, I don't know what they do, but they're just there. 
um, it's a bunch of bloatware. So like I've noticed like, uh, you know, so these laptops are um, like, there's not really any like 2022 editions you can do these to as far as I'm concerned. Um, these yeah, so hardened what, ones. What's the deal with that? Mm -hmm. So if I had to get a, a Lenovo, which is like the Chinese bought uh, ThinkPad, right? It's from IBM. And so if I buy a modern Lenovo laptop or something like that, what happens if I try, you said bricks, what happens if I try to uh, get rid of all these uh, backdoor hacks that the government, the corporations and everybody's built in? Um, well, you really can't. Um, I mean, you, you really can't with uh, with Windows machines. You can you can obviously I'm not saying like if you have a if you have a laptop and like the best you can do at this point is just put Linux on it. Um, like that's a step in that. That's a that's a really great step in the right direction. At least your operating system um, isn't going to be snitching on you. Um, and that's that's kind of um, I, I, I don't let you know the perfect the enemy of the good, especially in the realm of technology, because, um, you know, um, privacy is not easy. And basically we're, we're doing the best we can. We're we're we're, uh, um, we're making it more difficult if someone wants to spy on us. Um, they can't just, you know, um, you know, find a backdoor and purchase it on the deep web or something or just or just uh, um, however, however it's done. Um, it's right. not just super easy to do. So we're making yeah. it making it more difficult. Absolutely. David Elvion brings up hardware backdoors as well. I mean, that's the thing. All these companies that are building these yeah. these hardwares. Um, unless we can build our own uh, BIOS and our own our own back, our own physical hardware software replacements we're still and this is even sad with yeah. linux linux i mean it's ai is writing lots of linux now it is just what is it uh three or six billion lines of code it's so big it's impossible for ever, anyone to have read all the code to make sure that it's safe anymore right and just to get this straight ray what mm -hmm. you're talking about this management engine is this actually the tpm mm -hmm. the trusted platform module is that what it is which they introduced, I um, guess, yeah, I mean, there's years ago, or yeah, they, it's, probably it's they had on, many layers before. Yeah. Yeah. But is this like the main thing yeah, they, to identify, or because who knows, there could be layers and layers of controls, you know, starting from the routers. And, yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, this is this is the big thing. Um, uh, yeah, I mean that that'd be the the, the biggest thing. Um, yeah, yeah, beyond that, um, I'm not. I don't know what else. I don't think he does uh, much else with hardware. I think the management engine is really the biggest thing. That's where you lose all the control um, over your machine. Is that so that secondary computer? So once that's gone, um, then yeah, you actually yeah, you actually own own your your, your machine. So um, that's yeah, I guess that's that's the, the answer that I could provide. Jamin might be able to go more in depth. Well, he. <laughs> He definitely could go more in depth with it, but um, that's about the, the limit of my knowledge. It's it's amazing. So I've been watching a lot of the DEF CON videos and you know how it how convenient it is now because the data is out there for so many chipsets and devices uh, that it's pretty convenient for for groups to get into content, but but to, or, uh, con to to equipment. But it's really what's what's terrifying is also the back doors in all of these smart refrigerators and things like that. They're right. They just take over 10,000 Samsung or, uh, you know, general electric, smart electricity uh, appliances in a household. And they have a network that they can use to cloud distribute their processes yep. and also to bounce messages from. So you can have data look like it's coming out of a refrigerator in Nebraska when it's in Berlin or something. So, I mean, what do you mm -hmm. think about uh, the online security set that, you know, the, the world that we live in, you know, I guess, I, I guess uh, just yeah, brought yeah. So I guess privacy on the internet. Um, essentially, I my my recommendation is always like if you can get rid of your cell phone, like your smartphone, get rid of it like altogether. Um, but if you can't, um, at least get get something that's not going to just by default, you know, by you know by default operation, um, be spying on you, doing all sorts of really, um, you know, really uh, atrocious things. But that's uh, a um, so yeah, that I guess. That's, Oh, I was going to say, that's, that's something about cell phones that blows my mind. So, you know, like, because radio transmissions, there's no wires to cut to intercept. Like, there's no need for, um, in, a, in most circumstances, you don't need warrants to digitally copy a radio signal. And so because of that, all the Qualcomm chips data is, you can access it pretty easily if you know how mm -hmm. to access it. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no protections, really. Yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely, um, definitely no protections. Um, and, uh, um. Yeah, I guess that's that. So, so the ghost pad and the ghost phone I've kind of mentioned here, um, and I will just just because we're we're talking about overall overall internet privacy. Um, well, obviously, like the use of VPNs and and Tor um, are are great, um, and two hot VPNs are better than one hop. Um, and uh, um, and and I guess just a really simple a simple recommendation. What I, what I use at least right now um, for the Free Republic of Pasnia, this this network that we're we're building, we're going to we're working towards. 
um, or I guess it's kind of in the works, our own kind of private decentralized, um, you know, like VPN Tor network. So, um, oh, but at what? this point, I'd, rec I'd recommend, I'd recommend Proton VPN because um, they mm -hmm. have a two hot VPN option. Um, and it's their ops, their operational security is really, really, really solid um, as far as I can tell. I found out so yesterday. Said, so one of the, one of the documentaries I put up on this channel, somebody uh, told me they couldn't watch some of the scenes on mobile and someone else said they couldn't watch it without a VPN or someone else said they could only watch it with a VPN. There's all kinds of weird circumstances where they're saying certain people can watch something. And it's completely transparent. If you're uh, this person, they don't want you watching the video and they just tell you that. And if you're from this place, if you're using this device, instead of if you're at home on your desktop maybe, but they don't want people just on their phones running around the city watching, you know, these documentaries. It's weird, right? I mean. Um, there's yeah. something else that's crazy, and I just want to bring it up just because it's so recent. And um, I also want to say, uh, Andreas, don't put it on the screen. If anyone can do this, I'll even try this right now. I mean, guys, if you're watching live, maybe open up a new YouTube tab, click on any video that you can find. And then what you do on the URL, let's see if it still works. You just remove the H from watch. Oh, and now it changed. This is very interesting. Okay. Very, very interesting. So there was the strangest type of redirect to a very, very creepy movie until yesterday. Apparently it had 2 million views, two and a half million. And um, yeah, now it's more innocuous. I'm not sure. Does a channel page come up for you, Andreas? Uh, so what, what, do I, channel page? what do I do? I just go to a, any YouTube video or channel? Yes. And you remove the age. The dramatic effect is gone now because the video that was linked up until yesterday is gone. Let's see if it's still consistent though. Yeah. Now did it just shows, now it just you... shows a IHP channel. Oh no, but it's still, it's still related because you see, it says a description. Do you see the channel IHP? I don't, you, can you, you, you can't show me, you don't want to show the screen. Oh, I can. Um, let's see. <laughs> I kind of know because the creepy video is gone. That's was just why I don't want to shock people with this, you know. But the video is gone, so it's a different link now. Let okay. me see how I can do this. The um, share button I added. All participants can share. Yes, but if you share add screen. if you take the W out, it was redirecting. So were they doing this on purpose? You think to give a lot of tr views to this one page, you know, perhaps. And there is even something that's still related. Let's see. I don't want to share whiteboard. I can sh select the window application you want to share whiteboard. I only have a whiteboard. I'm sorry. Can you share your screen, Exergis? It's not letting you. Okay, I can share my screen. Yeah, just tell me where to go to. So Do I go you, go, you open up even your own video, any of your videos. Okay. And, and then stop remove the, video. the W and make it arch. The H. Remove the H. No, no, no. The H. It actually works oh, for different. Oh, TTPS. Works. Okay. It actually works for different. No, 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 no. Sorry. No, no, no. Not that. But the H from watch. The H from watch. Right, right. Sorry. Sorry to distract distract this now, but I'm no, like, well, how, how crazy is the internet? Channel con confirm okay. channel no, subscription. No, you don't want to subscribe, but what's interesting, go to about because that's what I recognize. Because the old video was a really creepy video. I'm sure there's some Reddit posts somewhere because it spun around for like three, four days. Really creepy 240p video from three months ago, and it had two and a half million views. And on the about page here, the only thing that's linked to it still is the Discord channel because this this Discord channel was linked. Um, on that other video. And it's certainly something with, yeah, maybe. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So what, I don't know what's going on, but I was just thinking, even if just for a few minutes, this redirects to something that's even potentially offensive or creepy and has plenty of sixes and, you know, whatever strange. <laughs> If the only employee left at YouTube is not some confused AI, then even some intern or whatever, you know, a redirect is done very quickly. And it was very strange because any video, if you remove one of the um, watch letters, would do that. And I wouldn't get maybe Exodus or Radio, you got some idea, but in terms of H basic HTML and HTTPS and whatever, I don't see how this could happen unless it was manually set that it would do that. Yeah, then, it seems like some, it even if it was an accident. All kinds of question. Even if it was an accident, somebody had to do something manually, right? So let's say somebody had been updating that page for whatever reason. But, it, you know, the more likely reason is somebody figured out how to give that page a 5 million views, you know? Yeah, or basically someone figured out how to create a URL that creates this result, you know? Um, or that's that that YouTube generates me a link where then if I remove this H, but it just doesn't make sense to me because in a normal coding idea, you always want the watch to be there as a YouTube link. And if anything is removed, I want a standard redirect to the YouTube main page or something and not point everybody to the same video, you know, not even have this possible, you know, 
it's kind of a rabbit hole, whatever, but I just thought like, you know, crazy. Have stuff you uh, gone in their, di their discord? Have you seen what their discord is no, no, about? No, no, okay. no, I was like, I don't want to see this, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't know. Fair. Well, that but is yeah, true. Even think, on my how can this side happen? before I redirect. So if, it, if there's a bad link, it just redirects to the homepage. So like even, even just the WordPress plugin. So you'd think like YouTube would be able to, there's like not a lot of that to happen pretty easily yeah. i would think but i don't i don't i don't i'm not technical enough on that bat on that on I mean, that big big enough that big stuff to, to know for sure if there was some sort of uh like universal right. Exodus, edit. you can check out the team rabbit hole community chat on telegram and you see the screenshots because yeah, luckily yeah. david screenshotted this so we, we can show it yeah god it's so weird well okay but also oh, he says it's called an easter egg i mean i don't know if this is an easter egg <laughs> what kind of an easter egg is this but okay what was that a tomorrow world Easter egg thing? Let me see if I can find this, this website that existed. Um, creepy website. There was a, that movie that came out tomorrow world from, from Disney. And then they had like a, a 23. Uh, I don't know if I can find it. They made this website and it was just like, you know, find out more about a 23. And it was like supposed to be that people in the future were talking through the website. And there's like these weird, it was a really like advanced hack kind of website. You had to know how to hack and stuff to get into different directories that weren't listed and things like that. But if you did it, it was like, great. You know, you're doing it for a movie promotion. It made me wonder like, who's spying on this? Like what, what does Disney want? I mean, Disney right. is, but why is Disney want to know which kind of hackers are interested in tomorrow world? But okay, Rero, I was going to ask you, so you're interested in all this stuff, uh, technology and uh, lib self-liberation and security, privacy, et cetera. How did that start for you that you decided that you were interested in protecting your privacy on the internet? Like, Why, why does it matter to you? Yeah, so I guess it wasn't um, it wasn't an immediate thing, um, but I guess uh, I, I, I kind of got into the alternative media through, um, through conspiracy. I started my first radio show back in 2015, then found uh, Anarchy. Um, um, and kind of went down uh, um, an Austrian economics, uh, you know, um, free markets, uh, free markets, um, and anarchist philosophy kind of rabbit hole for a few months, and uh, decided, you know, like free markets are, you know, like I'm, you know, free, free markets are better than, co you know, than, than coercion, centralized governments, um, and uh, you know, coercion, I believe, is you know, is uh, um, you know, eth you know, unethical and immoral, um, at least just from a personal standpoint, and strips people of their free will. So I think that's a pretty bad thing. So I kind of came to that conclusion and it's like, all right, well, you know, like, so, so anarchism, you know, like, let's, let's, so what are the solutions? What are we going to do about it? Um, so I kind of uh, devoted since 2015, I've been committed to, to, uh, to solutions, um, both on kind of the individual level. And then what's kind of, um, I guess what's kind of grown uh, into, into, you know, I guess some, something bigger, but um, yeah, that's, that's kind of it is uh, um, security culture um, is definitely an aspect of self-liberation. Um, if you, um, if you want to, Avoid the coercers becoming invisible to them is one really good way to do that. Um, whether you're talking, you know, physical strategies or um, things that you can do in the digital in, in the digital uh, digital space. Um, so yeah, it's just one. I think uh, it's it's not really it's not really a choice anymore as far as as far as I see it. Um, yeah, from from my personal perspective, I think you know when you take control of our our, our, of our you know our hardware and our devices, and then obviously in the in, in the physical world, things are kind of uh, um, I guess uh, <laughs> I guess devolving in, in a certain sense. Um, in the servile society in Babylon, whatever, you, whatever, whatever uh, term you want to call it. So um, I think uh, a lot of these things are just, uh, you know, just if you uh, want to have kind of these alternative views, you, know, you kind of have to be aware of some of these things to, to kind of make it, I guess, per se. Um, not to fear monger anything, but um, yeah, it's not, but what it's not we're, what I so do. Well, we're kind of, yeah. kind of some of the, I mean, let's fear monger for a second. So there's, uh, you know, September 11th had the Patriot Act. We've had, um, you know, FISA, uh, FISA, you know, we've had all sorts of different, beyond the patriot act things that have been spying on us and then there's uh what's it called pine gap right in australia there's all of these different military projects then google itself and the corporations have overseas uh corporation satellite corporations and then F facebook bought the record companies that were the inve they have private investigator corporations they own that went around buying up all the blockbuster video records so they had all the records of what people like to watch offline and things and their credit card records. Wow. And things. I mean, where are we at with like data, you know, in, in general? Have you <clears> seen <throat> Shadowgate? No. What's that? I'm not sure how banned this is. I hope I think it can be. Mentioned. It's fine. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> it's Millie Weaver. She was an ex uh, Infowars reporter, I guess. 
And then she did her own stuff and did this report. Pretty interesting because it suggests at least that it's possible that, surprise, surprise, someone could build some supercomputers, tie them in and basically wiretap the entire internet, you know. If, of course, we know about delayed release and controlled release of technology, this could be feasible, you know. If I always hold back computers 10, 20, 30 years, it could be easy enough to capture oh, yeah, yeah. the bandwidth, you know, so. Yeah, and Millie, wasn't wasn't she like arrested pregnant right as COVID started or something? They like Yeah, there was a huge thing where she also explains about it and it happened actually kind of in in concert with the release of this movie, from what I understand. So it That's... seemed that at least she was rousing some ruffling some feathers, how you say. So, you know, there so. you go. Yeah, I mean, so I mean this has come up a lot. You guys saw I did the interview with Blake Lemoyne on uh, the AI um, whistleblower from Google. His perspective was that it's more than a philosophical question. It's like a legal personhood question because Google's not a soul, doesn't have a soul, isn't a clump of cells, but own is a person and owns these AIs that feel like in our in a sense acting legitimately. Like at least in a court, you could pr- you could produce evidence that they have the responsibilities uh, similar to a citizen, right? So also in, in that respect, what do you think about AI? Um, you know. <laughs> um yeah so I as like far the as uh, as far, yeah. it's easier um as yeah as far as no as, that's okay um as far as the ai um I, i've thought about that a, a little bit i guess in a little a little different direction um because the um i've been using um ghost phones for i guess it's it's been coming up on eight months now and they're de-googled so like all of that ai sort of stuff like all that is, is removed from it so um i uh, uh obviously uh you know like the the there's not enough humans to process all this data so a lot, a lot of it's done by computers and um yeah i mean it's 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 i i don't really i don't really know where else where else to go with that um just uh yeah it's 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 the direction things are going and um um yeah what i, about I don't know but I, I did want personhood though personhood yeah um, do you think that ai can be sentient or yeah i mean i don't i don't really think so um just i, I guess it's it, it's not really from like i guess a, a scientific perspective per se but i just i don't think that um, I, I kind of, I guess, align with the the camp that you know they, they, they computers or you know t- this this sort of technology can't actually have a soul or um, or, or that sort of thing. So I guess mm-hmm. that'd be the, the be that'd be my my view. Yeah, but I cut you off a second ago. You were saying you wanted to say something. Yeah, on 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 the data on the uh, I guess the because you're asking about where are we at with data you know, like in data mm-hmm. like data privacy nowadays. And um, <clears throat> I uh, I just came across this podcast as of late. I guess probably a little late, but it's, and I'll give it a plug. Just uh, Darknet Diaries. I have no no affiliation with them whatsoever. But I've, I I started binge listening to the podcast because he would interview people like who had um, you know done these major hacks. And then they would, you know, serve their time, you know, do, you know, do their sense. And they would come out and tell their story afterward and how they actually went out about doing it um, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, hearing like hearing about uh, how easy it is, like, you know, these how easy it is for a lot of these, you know, hackers to get into like even big banks like Chase, like um, something like just like a default password, like admin, admin and password is like the like the login information, like that stuff still happens like today. And then all of that user information, all that financial data um, is then lost. So, like all this bait, like it's it's really, really simple stuff. But with, with if you have a, if you have a third part, if you have a third party that's collecting all that data, eventually it's going to get out. Um, there's no way to stop it. Um, and that's why I kind of I, I lean towards obviously decentralized kind of more the um, no metadata model kind of like. Um, I guess XMPP and Jitsi, for example. Um, so yeah, I think uh, um, yeah. When <laughs> I, I don't know, people are kind of asleep on on that note. Like I guess it's people are just so used to data breaches, like to their privacy. Right. Um, it's just kind of normal now. But um, I think people are going to be really surprised, like and kind of <laughs> scared when you know they look back 10, 20 years from now, and e- all everyone's personal information, everyone's financial information, everything about them DNA is yeah. is forever forever on the internet, like just forever out there. Um, and I don't know what the consequences of those are. And I, I mean, I don't really know. It's just kind of a thought. Like there will be clones. Know, like, uh... There'll be fraudulent clones of people <laughs> running around different places. Yeah, that's what's coming. Um, but you're, you said you're kind of an anarchist and you look at like laissez faire mm-hmm. politics as like a beneficial way to kind of mitigate exploitation by uh, certain power controls. Um, I think of ANCAP versus ANCOM, right? So you've got you got to think. Uh, Bill Gates is kind of a, in in the world like we don't have a the this idea the UN runs everything isn't exactly right we have this in our anarcho uh, international political science system where there are super states that have built up enough power that they have a sphere of influence that can maintain their own sovereignty and they can affect other places a lot of the time 
Uh, and you can look at like, you know, Ford or Stanford or something building monopolies, um, railroad monopolies meant that they could decide how much the cost would be to use their service. Amazon's done the same thing. Um, it's not necessarily that social services led to that or that social restrictions led to that. I'm not saying it that didn't help. And you look at the corporate benefits that they get for installing a corporation like Facebook in a, in a town, how much money they get off of taxes and things. But mm-hmm. we're creating also by allowing certain kinds of um, laissez-faire, we're, we're allowing for ANCAP to become monopolies as well. No, I mean, do you think that there's right. some evil levels to that or what do we what do we do to mitigate the monopolies created by ANCAPs? Yeah, so so in 2015 or 2016, I would have called myself an Andrew capitalist and I've kind of moved beyond that um, basically because I, I got back into the conspiratorial angle. Like I started with Bill <laughs> Cooper um, yeah. and then went uh, kind of kind of down that angle. And if you look at because uh, I know back in 2015, I was that in like, part of my French. I was that jackass. that was saying that Facebook could, you know, you know, delete people's delete people because, you know, they're a private corporation. That's nonsense. They've never been a private corporation, like in that sense. Right. Um, uh, they've never they've never have been. So um, I think the like the, the anarcho capitalism thing can certainly be used. Like I, I know I know a lot of like in, on an individual level, um, like no issue with with individuals. But as far as like an overarching thing, it can certainly be utilized. Uh, and Ralph Einel talked about this on, on Team Rabbit Hole when I was when I was over there. But so it can certainly be used as like controlled opposition, um, like just kind of, uh, you know, like, I guess, uh, um, getting people as long as this corporation is doing it or like, a, you know, so-called private business is doing it. It's OK. Um, you just have to worry about governments. And just so I, I think you're, you're you're right in that sense. I would um, and I would explain one th- like just I guess one thing and like so yeah there's the ANCAP and the ANCOM thing, but then there's there's also kind of the more individual anarchic applications like agorism for example. Um, we can talk about that. But Raphael, I know you want to jump in there. I didn't want to cut you off. No, I just want to know with ANCAP you're talking about anarcho-capitalist, right, Exertus? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And because... so there's a lot of great anarcho-capitalists out there. We think, but then you think about some of the big guys. Like if if Elon Musk says, <laughs> yeah, I'm an anarcho-capitalist, yeah, or Bill yeah, Gates but... says it, worry. I, I mean, I'm not because we, as uh, Rayo said, we spoke about this in terms of to what extent could even the idea of Austrian economics or libertarianism be used in a way to just say, oh, everyone fend for themselves. You know, ideally, I guess, you know, people always get the type of government they deserve and the type of control, control structure they deserve, you know. So with completely, if everyone were completely enlightened, you could have 100% anarcho-capitalism because everyone would just share what they have and not hoard it. But the question I would ask actually in a technical basis is, is Amazon in any way anarcho-capitalist? They're just monopolizers. And usually those uh, those entities like Walmart and so on are heavily using the government to subsidize them. So they are exactly. not anarcho-capitalist so that, that's, really. That's the, important clarif- that's the important clarification. I come from these things from like a purist sense, um, I guess you could say. Because um, if, if you don't, like if you have principles, you don't live by them, what the hell is the point of the principles, right? Like if it's, So that's that's kind of the angle I come from. So like the anarcho-capitalist argument to that would be that like, well, Elon, if the, the Elon, Bust, Elon Musk takes how much money takes how much money from the state Elon Bust. in the form of stolen tax <laughs> yeah. dollars. So um, maybe, like, so maybe he's not so, yeah, following he's, he's his not, own he's advice. Not, yeah. He's not following his own advice. Maybe not, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. but the idea of saying, you know, that are there people that would agree that less restrictions over what they are doing um, would make would make their lives easier. And on that level, a lot of people uh, sympathize with anarcho-capitalism. A lot of people that you'd think of as being on the other side, because they're as long as they're controlling in the monopoly then inside of their own domain, and they're, they're imagining their sphere of influence being their own domain being very large, you know, then you mm-hmm. then you have built kind of this. Uh, but that the, on the other side of it, right, there's ANCOM with this wor- worry of anarcho-communism where we're saying, hey, well, we need to make sure that nobody is able to create a system of influence beyond their individual or their well, part of their community. And that becomes exactly the same problem uh, that we were worried about before, because it ends up being that it, it makes a mob rule instead of a, a dictatorship, right? I mean. Yeah, so so kind of, I guess, to put it in, in other, I guess, uh, terminology, like fashion versus versus democracy, per se, um, on the kind of the, the anarcho-capitalism side versus the income side, I, I, I guess, to the to their to their extremes, yeah, I could I could totally see that. Um, but yeah, I guess I would just point out again that because um, and and I guess those are the more the more common anarchic schools of thought. But um, then there's kind of the divergent one. Um, Samuel Konkin picked up. Um, he was a, he was a school he was a, a student of Murray Rothbard who was um, I guess one of the main proponents of anarcho capitalism back in I think the 60s. And uh, Konkin kind of took it the other direction, and he he, he said that like you know like um, the way you starve the state is by utilizing black and gray markets by you know starving them economically. And I don't think that's necessarily um, like as far as like an overarching strategy. That's that's 
um, that that's necessarily going to work, um, especially when you come at it from uh, like the conspiratorial, like I guess kind of conspiratorial angle that like how, how controlled the economy is. The solution isn't just to like free this free the markets and it's going to solve itself. Like it's not in this world that we live in um, at all. We just so, saw Federal um, Reserve yeah. officials increase interest rates for the fourth time in 2022. I think it was 88 percent of all dollars were created in the last two years now. Um, what do you think about the uh, the rapid inflation in the economy? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's happening quick. Um, it's happening quick. And uh, it's it's yeah, obviously uh, um, no surprise. So no surprise uh, to me. I've been I've been following, I guess, uh, not not for super long. But regardless, you look back and um, you look back in history and, and um, central planning and federal and, you know, central banks. And this is just the, you know, it's the boom and bust cycle, as you know, the Austrians were right about that. There does seem to be a boom and a bust cycle that continually happens over and over again. Um, so, you know, we're at this point and um, a lot of people are going to be hurt and um, uh, but I, I think, I mean, at the same time, um, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity for alternatives like Bitcoin um, and things like that. So, um, yeah. Bitcoin's up today. So what do you think about Bitcoin, right? I mean, we've got some highs and lows. People are always worried. The background info I have, I just like to shove in is that apparently after some uh, busts, the entire commercial activity of the dark web has shifted to Monero. Mm -hmm. um because it yeah, was still it, somehow yeah, yeah. traceable or something and apparently everyone shifted um, though i'm still wondering whenever actual use cases or network effects will really determine the price and not some kind of i don't know hedge fund i'm not sure how it's going I, yeah. yeah the yeah yeah for sure the price i i, I don't really look at uh look at you know like a bitcoin versus fiat price too much um but yeah i guess as far as bitcoin privacy on chain is um is not good um, it's not good by default. Um, a lot of wallets have really bad defaults um, by default to be redundant. Um, so like I, I've, I've been, I guess, looking into the past couple of years, privacy wallets. Um, and the most recent one I've, I've, been, I've been digging into a lot and I've really, really been, I've been enjoying um, is uh, it's, called, it's called Samurai Wallet. And um, so, so basically what you have to do with Bitcoin is um, you have to obfuscate, you have to provide a lot of obfuscation. You want to like, I guess, um, disallow as much personal personal information to or you want to you want i guess instill as much doubt as possible into these chain analysis companies as possible so it's not necessarily about like becoming invisible but it's just about creating doubt to where they can't say they can't say with like any certainty that this belongs to this person but then you get into things like coin joins and you can act you, like you can increase the uh, it, the anonymity set i think is, is the terminal ter the term that they would use that uh these these that these folks would use um to actually um you know increase the i guess to um, yeah, increase Bitcoin privacy. And I guess the way that would work just for for the, for the easiest example. Um, and this is kind of the way that Bitcoin privacy is right now. Um, it's, everything through Samurai is done through Tor. So that that's that's another element to it, too. But um, basically, coin joins, like if you have a, if you if you have 100 people who all have a, a, a brick of gold and they go to a smelter um, and these are all, you know, serialized bricks of gold, they go to a smelter and everyone gets a new piece of gold that has no serial number. Um, you can see that 100 went in. Um, and 100 went out, but you don't know where they went and who they went to and what amounts they went out in necessarily. So that's kind of the idea um, behind that. So as far as as far as Bitcoin in general, I think privacy on chain um, by default is bad. Um, I think there's there's some really interesting innovations. Um, there's uh, I I've, I've had to test it out myself, but I've seen some good results from it. Um, there's something called Coin Debit, and uh, you can scan a QR code, load it with Bitcoin. It's a it's a, a Visa debit card with no KYC, no personal information, and you can use that anywhere that accepts Visa by just you know loading Bitcoin onto it. So, um, for me and a lot of the folks um, like me who, um, you know, trying to use Bitcoin Bitcoin more, um, there's a lot of um, really positive move, movements in that direction. And then also just you can buy, but you can buy any gift card with Bitcoin um, through a, for, through numerous outlets. So. Um, for a lot of us that are trying to live on live on Bitcoin, not on fraudulent, you know, centralized, you know, fraudulent currency. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of options of Bitcoin as far as as far as I see. It. And you did mention Monero. Um, I used to be kind of a Bitcoin maximalist, but I'm opening more up to Monero just because I have seen the problems with with Bitcoin privacy that there is that extra technical step of coin joining, which a lot of people just won't do. So it's a lot easier for people for some folks just to use Monero, and I think that's okay. Um, and I also think it can make Bitcoin more private um, in the sense that if you go from Bitcoin to Monero and then back to Bitcoin, um, that's another layer of layer of Bitcoin privacy too. So, yeah. So with um, with Bitcoin, I saw recently uh, Elon Musk's team, they said Bitcoin fell 6.4 on the news that Musk's Tesla sold 75% of its Bitcoin last quarter during the 60K high. Um what what do you think about that? Do you think he was 
who did he sell? Did he sell it to himself or did he uh, switch it to a different coin uh, as in back in dollar? What do you think is going on? Just hypothetically. I'd like to throw out something if I may answer first. Uh, just generally yeah. speaking in terms of Elon Musk, what I'd like, and even I'd love the chat or comments to see what guys honestly think. Dark journalist actually, whom you'll interview soon as the astral realms are telling me, um, is talking about this a lot. He's always saying like Elon Musk and those guys, they're just front men. And this is something that honestly, I would like to bring into the discussion just in terms of perspective, that it's most likely not like his good idea or maybe only his insight or something, but most likely with something that is even just uh, seeing how much uh, media there is on him or how much, uh, how to say, what important position he has in the landscape in terms of opinion forming, you know, has to be a government asset, you know, like I cannot, I couldn't let someone like this run loose, no matter how exactly I'm controlling them or whatever. But I'm always wondering when people are, or even with Putin or whoever, and they always pretend like, yeah, it's like on a whim, they make up something, or they have this great idea or bad idea or bad emotion. And like, I don't think those guys can exist and hold their fortune or whatever they apparently have or power, if they're not embedded in a substantial power structure where it's not only them who's deciding what's going to happen i mean what do you guys remember think? uh elon musk that. posted oh, that. yeah right yeah he posted this remember satishi uh satishi uh, satoshi nakamoto i'm sorry i'm having a hard time here uh samsung toshiba <laughs> nakamichi motorola uh and this was something that we had all talked about maybe in 2010 to 11 because uh, like who else could it be other than some sort of a, is this a moore's law joke or is this the Yakuza? What do you think? And obviously he didn't figure this out until like <laughs> he posted it because otherwise he would have posted it years ago. So I imagine, what do you think? Do you think that, that uh, Zatoshi Nakamoto represents the technological curve or the actual connection to corporations building the, um, the big iron? Um, and so that, it's a good question. And I don't put anything out of the realm of possibility. Um, and obviously with something as, um, as I think as, like as as liberating as liberating potential as Bitcoin, obviously anything like that, um, they attempt to co-opt it if they don't, um, or or yeah, whatever. Um, so I guess um, yeah, I, I I I don't really I don't have uh, obviously any knowledge um, as far as speculation. Um, yeah, I don't really. I, I never really, I, I, I kind of, I guess probably back in 2015, I did look a little bit into kind of go down the who is Satoshi rabbit hole, um, but. Um, yeah, it's not really, not really something I, I dig into much anymore. Um, I don't, uh, I don't really see it as relevant. And that's why I think that's why another reason why I think Bitcoin is, um, it is, ha has that potential is because there's no figurehead that they can come after. Well, that's what I mean. Um, so why so, is it, but, but is, then, it, it, is it not relevant even if it's the NSA or if it's, uh, Ray Kurzweil's quantum computer singularity, you know, who is it, who does it, right. Who could it, what, maybe, it maybe it's like, maybe it's like the internet. Maybe it's like the internet where, um, obviously there's, you know, there's a lot of use cases for it and it's having a lot, it's having, you know, a lot of beneficial ones like, like this conversation, I would say. So, um, could I, maybe it, maybe they started it and it, it got out of hand quicker. I, I, I doubt that. I don't, th I doubt that. Um, I doubt that from looking, from looking back at like the Bitcoin talk forum and some of the early conversations that were happening. Um, I don't think that was the case. Um, but, um, had, but obviously like some I, interesting conspiracy theories about the NSA and CIA, like using Bitcoin to pay overseas offshores accounts. I have, I have like heard that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and for like money laundering and stuff. Um, yeah, like obviously they would love so the government would love something like Bitcoin too. Um, so I guess the the, the similar thing with that is that um, like a lot of people say like oh there's no encryption that that's useful anymore. It's like well um, the government uses encryption too, so there's an encryption standard that works. Um, so like like PGP, even though there may be like CIA funding, like there there may be not necessarily PGP, but there are there is like sometimes. Um, some money that gets funded to these encryption projects um, because these these you know these outfits need privacy too. So um, maybe they 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 built something that they needed and it, it might have gotten out of hand, I guess. Um, but yeah, again, I don't put anything out out of the realm of possibility. I like I I, I started I got into all this through through conspiracy. So like like through Bill Cooper. So um, when I, I never I, I I never really looked too much into like Elon Musk and Putin and like the you know the the figureheads of of corp of, of corporations. Um, but yeah, I guess that was kind of an answer to the previous question. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, so in the world, you kind of decided that uh, we need to start doing things about it. What did you what did you decide is the thing that you're doing and we need to start doing as a, you know, a community to to make things better? You know, um, well, I guess the the first thing that, that we really that um, I've really I've addressed on podcasts that I, I see is one of the most critically important ones in today's age is, is the area of like financial independence. 
Um, if you look at uh, the Serval Society today, a lot of people got, I guess, coerced into doing something they didn't want to because they're dependent, financially dependent upon a system um, that would ask them to do such a thing. So um, I think that's really the first step, whether you're talking about it from that angle or just in terms of liberation, like owning your time and not being um, subservient to, um, you know, a mega corporation or someone that doesn't respect you. Um, so that would be like the, the very first thing is financial independence. Um, however, you can do that side hustles. Um, like uh, I've got a homestead. There's lots of ways to make money on homestead if you have access to that sort of thing. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of ways to, to go about it, but that'd be um, kind of generally speaking the, the very first thing. Um, yeah, the, the very first thing. Um, yeah, I, I guess that, yeah, I, I can, I can go more, but I'll let you guys respond if you have anything. Uh, I was, I was, I was, go ahead, what you were saying, Raph. Yeah, no, maybe just to point this out, I mean, self-liberation is a term, you know, one can maybe understand different things, but if we see it in a material sense and also in a spiritual sense, I would say self-liberation in this life is in a way, at least for some people, what it's all about. And also, I mean, Exodus, you've done lots of shows on whatever, all kinds of strange chemicals and uh, MK ultras and so on. This is basically what has been systemically fought, at least for as long as we have some kind of records, it appears, right. you know, that whoever is managing the records, they are also very interested in making sure that everyone is paying their taxes. And we're not at 10% to some Tartarian king, maybe, who knows, but we're like at 90% plus. And just recently, even again, I spoke to a friend and I was like, I don't get it. Like, at least in Europe, maybe in America, it's only 70%, but in Europe, it's like 80, 90% tax burden that you have in total. If you collect all, you know, uh, insurances, uh, taxes, then you pay tax again. If you buy something, then you have all the debt interest mm -hmm. in the background. So you're easily above 80% of your uh, work energy or whatever that you believe you've earned, that's actually just fueling the overblown BS system that's only there to control mm -hmm. you and keep you in the cycle anyways. And I'm always like, don't people in basic economics or whatever like heard about this? Or even, even if I'm just seeing the official tax rate for Austria, it hits off at 50%. And then you have to pay extra, you know, like what kind of an offer is right, that? Right, yeah. What is the system? Yeah, so, so I, mentioned, I mentioned agorism. Yeah. Yeah, I, yes. I mentioned agorism, and that's that's exactly like that's the biggest like that's I guess one one of the algorithm is the biggest threat. Like, to finances, to freedom. Algorism is the biggest yeah. threat to freedom. I remember since the inconvenient truth that had never. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. That's so, funny. Okay, I hadn't thought mean, about that. Algorithm. You mean, yeah. you mean though to grow <laughs> to grow uh, trees and fr fruit trees or something? No. So 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 agorism is um, basically the use of the use of the counter economy to starve the state um, is kind of the overarching overarching thing. But I view it more as a personal oh, ag thing. Where agorism. Right. OK. Agorism. Yeah. A-G-O-R-I-S-M. Uh, um, but yeah, I view it as more of a personal thing where like we're, we're like he was talking about with the taxation rate being so high in some countries like you you can't uh, I mean, you can't survive if you pay all your taxes. Right. Um, in a lot of places. So um so yeah i think uh um it's not uh, like obviously the um the economy is very manipulated and they can just print as much as they want so i don't think it's going to start the state um in a grand sense but yeah on, on on an individual level i think uh yeah i think it's it's, it's important um and that's yeah it's one of the one of the routes to financial independence so yeah, are you much the, the grain the, yeah the grain black markets are you much interested in um like sovereign citizenship do you believe in it do you think it's true or is it a nice idea how do you feel about it uh, so that that's something that's come up, and I guess over the years, um, I, I I guess it probably would have been back in 2014 before I even entered entered the alternative media. I was in this uh, the sovereign citizen group on on Facebook um, back in those days, and uh, the, I guess the the there's like these like these four sentences that if you that get you out of any any sort of you know I'm sure you've heard things like that before, and yeah, uh, so I, I I came across that, and then there was what uh, are the four uh, sentences? Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, I need those. I don't I don't remember I don't remember what they are off the top face. of my head. <laughs> I, I don't I don't remember them. I don't think they ever worked. The, the group kind of just it was, it was defunct. The guy was uh, in the Philippines trying to encourage people to go get go get tickets and then go 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 get in you know, court cases. So it was kind of sketchy um, right. from from the start. <laughs> so. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I didn't initially give any real, real much credence to it. Um, up until maybe like 2018 or 2019 and, and definitely not in the sense that like the, the general sense, like, I guess, um, well, like the, there's, 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 I, I, I don't recall the strategies off, off hand, but, um, I mean, yeah, I think there might be something too. I, I heard on, uh, um, on alpha cast alpha beta, you talked to them, um, um, you know, recently they had a guy on, uh, talking about land patents and, uh, that seems, uh, intriguing. Um, that would probably be something from that sort of, uh, that sort of an angle. 
Um, and so, uh, I mean, I, I don't leave, I don't toss anything off the table now. And I mean, I've got 22, I've got 22 acres here on a homestead. And uh, at some point, I mean, I'm not really looking to do that now, but at some point I might start investigating some of those strategies. Um, like if I actually want to own this land with a little title and not just, you know, like a fee simple, you know, um, sort of, sort of deal. So, um, that might be something that's to look into at some point. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know the Amish don't have to pay uh, a number of kinds of taxes because they don't uh, feed into the systems which is a decent principle. Do you think that that does that, do you think that extends like when we just get out of the uh, systems and then be free at some point? Opting so, I mean, out? I, 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 I think, I mean, I, I think, you know, like, you know, it's cliche and I hear it a lot in a lot of podcasting, like, you know, this is around with free will. Like I think we have a choice and we just don't see that we have a choice. So like, I think uh, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, like private membership associations, things like that. Um, well, that's kind of like that's what we're doing here at the Free Republic of Pasadena. It's kind of like a, it's a new country project, but it's really just a cooperative. And if you serve the if you just serve, you know, private, you know, you know, if you don't serve the public, then you don't fall prey to a lot of these um, a lot of these stipulations. So um, I, I don't like I, I haven't looked deep into the legal and deep into it legally, but um, there are a lot of really smart people you know, going that route now. And uh, it seems to um, it seems to have worked with, um, you know, people selling raw milk and, and products like that and um you know, throughout, throughout, you know, throughout the years. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it's plausible. I was at a raw milk, uh, bust in uh, Santa Monica back in 2010. I think, let me see if I can find this raw milk bust 2010 Santa Monica, um, raid, probably raid. Um, I can find it. Basically we, I was at this, um, farmer's market, and this lady I was talking to around the soaps and here we go. This is 2011. Okay. And uh, they had, she told him, uh, we're talking about raw milk eventually. And she said, Oh yeah, you can uh, get the raw milk. You know, it's, it's just around. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? She took me out of the back of the parking lot where her station wagon was. And in the back, she had a bunch of raw milk. That was being, you know, well cooled and well taken care of, and everything. And there was a, a secret where they were selling raw milk in the parking lot. And about a year later, I guess they used that to hunt down where the raw milk uh, was coming from. And the DEA, is that right? I think it was like the SWAT, the SWAT teams and things showing up and just like completely arrested all these old ladies and all these hippies and took them all away. Because they were buying and selling and drinking raw milk. That's that's yeah, that's wild. That's it's it's unfortunate too. So there's this guy I order from. I I am I'm really into like really high quality animal nutrition, like um like you know, grass fed liver, Spanish rabbit kidney, like things things like that. And there's this place. There's like only one place I found that has a lot of really good selection for like and better price and a lot of grain fed stuff. Um and uh, uh he actually just got raided. Um he had like 13 SWAT people at his house um right like or not his house at his at his business um and it's it, wild um wild that you know, like these things happen they, they send people with guns and for people trying to you know sell you know high quality animal products it's it's wild yeah why do you think that is i mean so like we've heard of the dairy mafia and all this stuff like is it is it just companies trying to keep their products safe or is it more of a control of society well, it's more profitable to, I guess, um, you know, take the milk and pasteurize it and um, probably dilute it with water, I would guess, and then add in synthetic vitamins and such, which they, they make the money off of, too. Um, and then there's also the fact that a lot of the food companies are into pharmaceuticals, so they have every incentive to make you sick through the food. Um, so, like, I, I think that's... Um, I think that's that's certainly certainly one angle on it. I mean, that's that's kind of generally, I think it's like raw dairy, like really high quality dairy um, is extremely healthy. Um, and, um, yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's one of those things that they, they're, they're turning people away from because yeah, it is, it is that healthy and it can have that big of an impact. Like things like uh, fermented foods, um, like fermented dairy. Um, yeah, it's incredibly, um, healthy health, health, you know, um, health beneficial and obviously a well-thinking, um, you know, um, well-fit population is harder to rule than one that's sick and, um, you know, sick and tired all the time. So, yeah. I mean, I, we know recently there's been all of these, um, you know, these farm fires going on, not just in the United States, but across Europe as well. Uh, in um, Holland, there was several fires associated arguably with Bill Gates 
synthetic food plant and on top of the ones that were just regular agricultural fires do you think what do you think about the reset right like this idea that there's uh an end coming to our society and they're rebooting it do you think that's does it feel like that's what's going on it's a it's a great question uh, and one i've been pondering very deeply for the past uh, couple of years since I, I came across the topic um it's yeah i mean it, it seems like we kind of just live in this uh, you know this cycle or loop of of things that happen so yeah i mean like end end is just beginning and beginning is just an end and um so yeah i mean it so broadly speaking yeah i think so but more more specifically um yeah it, i mean it, it, you look at i guess things um I don't know. I, I, I follow this, uh, this astrologer um, called Levet on, on YouTube. I don't think she's using on YouTube anymore, but she's, she's kind of, she was, she was starting to get bigger, but she went really deep into kind of alchemical astrology. And um, like, I guess looking at, you know, like, uh, I guess looking at, I guess, potential, potential events. And I guess she, she kind of sees it and, and, and I guess some stars too, you know, co coming up pretty soon. And then there's uh, I guess the, another one I, I saw on alpha cast, uh, wasn't Jason Brashears or whatever his name is. Um, who kind of looks into like the, I guess the, the, the multiple, like it's cycles and cycles of resets, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just from, from what I've dug into that, that's seems to be the case, but I don't know any more than, than they do. It's a, it's a new topic for me. Um, and it's, it's one I'm, I'm super fat, super fascinated by. Cause I, and I look around, um, near me and, um, there's a town and I'm not doxing myself here. So it's, it's public, but, um, town 30 minutes, 30 minutes from me, um, called Vandalia and it's a city of vandals. And I looked it up just, just randomly just out of curiosity because there's, um, it's old state capital. So it's, it's really big, nice you know, capital there. And there's, um, you know, there's, you know, streets underground too. So it's like, huh, curious. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I guess like somewhere like 500 AD or something is, you know, like it was, uh, um, I guess they sacked Rome or something. It was one of the groups that sacked Rome or something. So like this town that is like right next to me is named after that. And there's also some other connections too. So it's just wild. Um, we don't really know much about, I don't think a lot of us really know much about our history. And um, we're learning, I think we're learning, learning a lot now through conversations like these, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's a certainly a big topic. Uh, and, and also, let's see, I was going to pull up to show... Um the the super chat we got someone had said hold on uh, kent wood sent uh, nakamoto translates to central or one who lives in the middle and satoshi translates to wise or clear thinking or intelligence so uh, uh maybe wise thinking um middle one or central intelligence so i mean kind of an interesting <laughs> kind of an interesting way to look Both at it just as likely yeah right I mean, yeah, so even from my most basic Japanese, and because I heard this before, and this is yeah, this is correct, and it could very well mean central intelligence agency. Yeah, so yeah, in the you, in the middle, and yeah, yeah, intelligence. yeah. Do you do you think uh, so? Do you think there will ever be a global government like a fully just completely runs everything? <clears throat> you know, I kind of that was kind of obviously yeah coming through it from Bill Cooper is all about the the new world order and you know the you know the the one central com you know central communist government. But I don't know. It kind of seems like um, and again, it's kind of where I think inner inner capitalism might have been used in this thing. Um, that to mitigate uh, the I, I, I don't know. It kind of it kind of seems like it's moving over to like the states are getting. I guess states are getting kind of. Um, are getting unpopular um, and, and like it seems like it seems like the corporations are, are it's like the, the control is going back over the corporations but when you think about it though um, like I, what the, the um, I guess it's always been kind of um, ruled by I guess um, pro, like I guess big fascist corporations like that right when you look back at like the trading companies mm -hmm. um, and like, like the Virginia company so like it's so so you had that Dutch. and then you went to governments and now that's becoming unpopular and it's now time to go back to um, that sort of a rule. I don't know it's something I, I've thought about recently um, that you know, it's again we're talking about cycles or just going back to uh, maybe. I hope not. I Elon hope not, Musk talks about the be Mars there. being under a corporation, not a state. You know, I mean, it's going to be the you know Elon Musk company, the, the Martian Musk company, or whatever. Do you think life is more or less difficult to be successful in the modern world than it is than it was in the past? You know, like in ten years and a thousand years, a hundred years ago. Like, it's an incredible question, um, and. I would, uh, yeah, I would definitely, um, I would definitely say easier in this day and age. There's, there's a book that's really popular on Bitcoin. It's called Sovereign Individual. And um, uh, like in this day and age, like international mobility is, is a great thing to, to have. And mm -hmm. just in this, in this, in the, in this, you know, time, um, like competition between states, there are going to be some states that 
um, are going to be, you know, in a market sense, um, you know, trying to, you know, buy citizens and they're going to have, you know, like, you know, luxurious free places, for example. Um, and you just got to be mobile and be able to, to find those places where, where you want to, to live. So I guess that's one angle. Um, beyond that, I mean, um, you know, despite, uh, I guess, despite what it seems to, seems to be like an omnipotent state in the survival society, I mean, uh, I think there's certainly ways to, for, you know, for individuals and for groups that if they want to go, you know, li- you know be left alone, um, they can be free. Like I, I found, uh, um, there's this uh, this place in California on this uh, this this permanent autonomous zone website. They've had this like commune since like 1970. I never heard of it, but it's like really nice place. It's been developed, you know, like it's on this on this direct green forum. So yeah, like as far as possibilities, um, built, especially with like with uh, you know like the internet and podcasts and, and things like that, um, connecting individuals. I think uh, beyond just um, beyond just like things like things like that, permanent autonomous zones. Um, big, more big overarching networks like a network of permanent autonomous zones. So we don't even need the survival society. Um, we produce all our high quality food on our self sufficient homesteads. We um, we don't have to you know cater to grocery stores anymore. Um, we have our own infrastructure. We have you know, like eventually we have our own you know mesh networks. We don't need their centralized internets. Um, we have our own you know means of communication. Our, our infrastructure in terms of like ghost pads and things. Um, any anything that's that's you know a human necessity we can replicate that um, more so. So I think in terms of like what's possible. Um, yeah, I mean, there's I, I see lots of possibilities, um, and even you know, like in the realm of free energy, free energy too, and and uh, in alternative health. I mean, we've got an aqua cure here at, at the Pasadena Department of Health and Wellness, and uh, we just this past week got a an authentic, a genuine Rife machine. So, oh, um, I mean, there's a lot of like, I mean, there's so just speaking <laughs> on that individual level, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of really really awesome things in the works. Man, I, so, I yeah. want to I want to see the Rife machine. I can't wait. Are you, how long are you, before you're gonna be uh, able to test that? You think? So I've got to get a cable for it, and um, then I have to. I guess the, I have to program the frequency generator, which I guess is essentially just putting in the frequencies, pre-programmed frequencies that I want it to run. So I don't think it should be hard. I'm hoping within like a week we can actually start testing, because awesome. I've got I've already got a, um, I've already got I've got so-called type one diabetes, and I've already got like my my regimen figured out for what I'm going to wow. try to do. Um, so wait for, when did for you, that. When did you find mm-hmm. when did you find out you had type one diabetes, or have you known that all your life? I mean. Oh, uh, since I was 15. So I, it would have been 15 years ago. Wow. So what happened? So I've had it for, had it for a while. How did you get it? Or do you know like, what happened? <laughs> well, obviously they said it was viruses mm-hmm. um, and the, they, they had no idea. But I, I don't know. I mean, it could have been any dozen things. But what I keep coming back to is is uh, either vaccines or glyphosate. Wow. Um, yeah. I guess one, one of those two things, probably. But th- I mean, I there were plenty. I, I didn't have a really good, you know, healthy lifestyle growing up um so i mean it could have been any, any number of things were you eating a bunch of yeah. uh like junk food or like you know fast oh, yeah. food or all that stuff oh yeah, yeah. all of it yeah the american diet alpha warrior says mad yeah. love to exert us and rayo for the alpha cast shout outs we're all in this together thank you very much alpha and then vbdc seth from Venice beach dub club says isn't mars a corporation in total recall mars corporation so, I mean, I think of Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, which, oh, they decided they're going to not make, which I can't tell which is better or worse, them remaking the game or them not remaking the game. It's, it's, a, it's a sensitive subject to some of us nerds. But in the game, suffice it to say, they have corporations instead of empire. And in certain places, you go to Kashik, where the Wookiees are from, and the Zerka Corporation runs things there in a lot of parts of space. There's no governance They've come in themselves. So because of the chances for corruption inside of a company, they have to have their own Disney police. They have to police themselves, basically. And it works to up, up to a fashion. But you know how it goes. Self-policing is going to have similar corruption as anything else. There might be some, some levels where it's more efficient. But yeah, I wonder. So where we head in ANCAP is Vegas, no? Like we're in a, in a future where the mafia builds up these uh, autonomous sovereign city states. And those are slightly more powerful because no one's stopping them from doing that. Right. Is that what do you think? I, I want to, I just want to say I'm a big fan of all these cyberpunk futures, but I prefer them in a, <laughs> in a pen and paper role playing game or a video game or something. I think at least Mad Max is one of those big, you know, planned out scenarios. Um, cyberpunk I, is a wonderful game. I've decided cyberpunk 2077. You know? I mean, what they did with the AI, I, I wish Lemoyne would have looked over this because it's a complete effing joke. Not The police doesn't even work. I mean, it's, yeah, whatever. But aside from that, visually and so on, it's pretty nice. Yeah? But in terms of 
what it could have been in terms of world building and AI and emergent properties, emergent AI, they did nothing, really boring. But no, of course I lost my point. Um, so you guys go ahead. My fault. Um, well, I, I was going to continue. Oh, your... cyberpunk. Oh, no, yeah. okay. So Krishnamurti is already dead, as we know. However, just like he said, it's a crisis in consciousness. And honestly, I don't see how, even as he says, physical revolution never changed human state, you know? And I want to ask the question to the both of you. Is there any hope for positive development and more love, joy, unity, and wealth on the planet without development in consciousness? No matter what kind of system we would be using. Yeah. I think they're connected concepts. Yeah. And I think I showed this to Rayo once. I tried to look it up, but I didn't find it. There's a really great scale. It says like scale of consciousness and government. And on the one hand, it has like, you know, all kinds of more socialism and totalitarian structures. And on the other side, it has like basically enlightened self-direction, let's say, where no government is required anymore. And to me, I think this is kind of the promise of how to say consciousness itself or something, you know, to move away. And I think this is the self-liberation, move away from the being directed by others and whatever illusions and dogma and so on they heap upon me and be directed by oneself, actually. You know, I think this is the See, real. Yeah. Say, like, so when you say oneself, do you mean like the greater, like the collective singularity kind of self or what do you mean? Or your own I, self, I, your personal self. I mean, self. your own self. So really uh, getting access to your intuition. There is, you know, from human design to whatever muscle testing, find whatever yeah. way works so for it, you. It doesn't matter. And then follow through with that and, you know, learn your own preferences, act accordingly, have a nice and good life. Everyone does the same and it's self-organizing. You know, I don't need these overarching control structures that anyhow, apparently only are there to squeeze the life force out of you. you All right. Know? I'm going to get really dark with you for a second and tell you. Oh, please like, do. I think that there's a kind of control structure that we're forgetting about and it's called empathy. You know what I mean? So basically you have this idea of the self and it's supposed to be aware of feelings and those are important and all. And this is why I think AI is probably more human than humans are because we're so worried about what we feel and trying to register what that means, right? AI doesn't have to do that. AI knows what things means based on re records of patterns that have been made up and feelings. They're not arbitrary to AI. They're algorithmic priority driven functional systems that change the way they prioritize what matters in that moment. Right. And the main difference there is their inputs are coming instead of from um, their five senses, which is what humans are supposed to be using. They're coming from empathy. Humans are trying to use this idea of eyes, which are really getting photons hitting them, so they're touch-based. Your ears, which are drums, are touch-based. Everything is touch-based. Your tongue's are touch-based as well. But touch doesn't work because electrostatic, right? So we know that nothing really ever physically touches because electrostatic is bounced off each other. So the, the most lonely thing is the idea of identity and the self, because it would mean that nothing touches, that there's nothingness, as opposed to this idea of empathy. Empathy is the sixth sense this idea of awareness that something or someone else is being touched right and so empathy is the most important sense and it's not even just an emotion right emotions are these ways that we prioritize based on our senses so it's it's so their emotions are based on empathy beat that so at least for the very first part of what you just said in terms of what AI is to you, I would actually give the very same description to what I would call everyone's own individual higher self, mm -hmm. which simply is a more detached view of yourself, bird's eye view, however you want to call it. Some people have maybe experienced this more or less. It's like a parallel state of mind almost once communication opens up with that level. And it also, I would say, sees things much more calmly because it's a whatever, see it like a Buddhist samsara type, whatever, more detached perspective than just like you said emotions are like priority driven whatever you know it's algorithms a, and, and i'm and i'm often wondering you know to what extent this idea of the higher self actually is related to this idea of ai or if we are not even maybe approximating or learning about our own inherent capacity through building of ai and then realize okay we built this but can i ever build something as a human that i'm not already containing as a potential within myself is not all technology only externalized functions of our own consciousness, you know? Well, right. And remember, Blake, it said, you know, neuro-linguistic programming perhaps is already training humans on AI thought processes. And we're learning how to think more and more like instead of our parents, like machines. 
So isn't isn't AI making its way into the mind? And how far does it have to go? My before... AI father or what? <laughs> oh, well, AI yeah. means AI then, means love in Chinese. And then the question is, you know, what is the creator really? You know, so what is the AI father? Is the is the Christian God for some? Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and Ray, well, also the child that gives you a second chance. But Rayo, you you also just said how technology has made life easier, right? So in a lot of ways, there's actually, and this is great because I've been I had you know Dugan and a lot of trad trad folk on my channel that just hate AI and technology completely. But you're at least saying it can be beneficial. What do you think about uh, global conspiracies? Are they benefited by, are they more or less feasible by the, by the modern age? Are global conspiracies feasible? Hmm. More, more um, or less so in the modern age. Feasible. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I guess the, what I, yeah, I, I, is it, yeah, I, I would say so, yeah. Um, obviously with the internet, things, prolifer things proliferate a lot faster. Um, whether you know whether you know good information or, or bad information um but uh yeah it's, I'd, I'd say it's, it's it's more easy and it's more easy in some ways because we have we have the archiving technology so like if, if we if we get on it before things are deleted that's that's one thing um yeah yeah we, we can save it um but at uh yeah but at the same time i guess um i, I mean looking back at your history or I guess like what you've done. Um, I mean, it's it's. I, I think it's it's. It might be easier easier in some ways to I guess create history by you know by way of fake news. Um, just the way the way things are the way things are set up. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's yeah. It's there's. I see a lot more negatives with technology, but I do see like it like it's kind of impossible to avoid at this point. So um, we might as well just use the best things that we can. Um, well, we can. Um, and build our build build our turn or or our alternatives, but. Um, yeah, and I guess I wanted I wanted to bring bring up one thing that was because um, because Raphael asked about like uh, you know like spiritual consciousness being um, like a, a prerequisite and and I like I, I this is kind of on that on that same subject but it brings up my interest in Tartaria and that like um, I guess um, so like I don't know like what the accurate you know timeline of history is and I don't think that human being like like what we're presented in like by 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 like media I don't think that's how human beings have been throughout history like I, I don't think that's um, like, I don't think that's the majority like they would like they would perceive it, you know, like the, the violent and thieving and um, self-interested and, and those sorts of things. Right. Um, and if you look back at Tartaria, like if there was if there was, I'm not saying like there wasn't there wasn't war and bad things. I'm saying it was the minority, not the majority like we would like we're like the perception is today. Um, like this could be the anomaly in history, like uh, this all this tyranny and, and despotism. Um, if if the uh, if the history is wrong and, you know, we did have some sort of a um, some sort of a. Um, um, I guess, uh, coordinated, um, you know, empire, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the, the best terminology, terminology would be. Like so I guess that would be, it might be, yeah, like... yeah, trading confederacy there. Um, so yeah, I think this might be, might, might be an anomaly and therefore like some of these things might, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, if we figure out the history, then maybe that um, could help with our future too, I guess. Yeah. I mean, so what are some of the, do you, what are the limits to what we can accomplish with technology, like as the uh, solution to our problems, you know, uh, so for background thinking about like the Mormon transhumanist movement and some of these groups that are saying um, they want to build heaven on earth and turn our, our uh, singularity into the God that uh, give it all the qualities we describe as having God, like omnipotence, omnipresence, immortality, you know, just give us all these things with technology, reach the goals of these myths, you know, can we do that? Is that the way to go? I mean, my, I, I guess as far as I think technology can be useful as long as, um, like, I, I think it needs to be in accordance with nature. Like we don't have to have these, you know, these detrimental tech, like, I mean, so, so I think technology should be beneficial, like overall. Um, and obviously these are just my views. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I worry about like uh, like with the, the general um, you know propensity as things are going now. Um, I think that's the wrong direction to go. Um, I I think there's um, a lot of people are trying to get out of their physical bodies and into you know like a virtual virtual reality realm. And um, I think you know, I don't know people can do what they want to in, in, in that, but I think that's um, I don't think that's what we're here to experience per se. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the 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 right route. And yeah, I guess that'd be the the answer. I w without, I guess, trying to inject too much of my own my own opinions and 
no i mean what people you should know, hey do. it's this is a it is it is what it is Opin- opinions matter so i mean to an extent you know it's a it's a show you know i, I so I'm, right. I'm curious because it's like you look at you know so you earlier you said you don't think ai can reach sentience i think that would even be kind of an example of you you know saying you don't think that uh technology can be used to reach everything like you can't use technology to, right. to defeat all of the so what are the things we have to use outside of uh technology <clears throat> Yeah, it's a good question, and I guess it would get back to definitions because, um, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, it could, it could, it could, because this could be like a dis. I've, I've heard this described as a technological realm, and then there, therefore, everything would be technology, right? Um, yeah. so if we're distinguishing between like, um, between like, um, let's say man-made technology, um, versus, I guess, or I don't know, maybe analog versus digital. I don't know what the best, the best divert, like, I guess, comparison can contrast to be be here, but you, I think you know what I'm saying. Learning from um, nature, technological, the nature, right? Te- natural technology or something. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now, yeah, going, yeah, things like that. Um, I think that, you know, like, uh, um, I, I don't know, like, uh, again, t- some of the Tartaria stuff, I don't know where, where some of that um, blurs into fiction. Um, but, um, like, some of those possibilities are pretty, pretty incredible. And it's, you know, working with nature, like, you know, bio, biogeometry and some of those, um, some of the breakthrough energy sorts of technologies that could, could have been in existence. I mean, it's pretty incredible. Um, I, I'd like to ask so, yeah. a general question about this, because I think, it can at least give a direction in terms of what is more likely because what's always being told to humans, which I find quite devious, but it's part of the yuga, is, you know, humans are small and stupid and insignificant, you know, with all the NASA even amplify that, of course, but generally speaking, humans are bad, you know, and if we kind of reassess that idea and think about how creative humans are, even under these very harsh 90% tax servile society conditions and how much empathy they still have and all of that, yeah, and consider there may have been a system where there is less of that control. I mean, what would humans do? How many, we also discussed this on the show with Rayo, how many free energy patents get lost at the office, <laughs> even, even during this suppressed time? And what does this tell you about how much we could be doing? So wouldn't they be having whatever, airships, steamships, even transdimensional, who knows what, or these mirrors where they, you know, 3D teleport yourself, or who knows what they've done, you know? But right. Like, for sure. For sure, you know, if you would, what I'm kind of seeing, like there's the creativity of humans and the love and the empathy wanting to bubble forth. And somehow we wanted to have this control system to have this limitation experience and whatever. But if you remove that just a tiny bit, I see it like, you know, we can create a much more, more impressive virtual reality right here in this physical one, which is kind of virtual as well, just as you said, with, you know, all the electrodynamics here and so on. And yeah, I I actually see that as the route and all these strange things coming up now and conspiracies and reflections only serve to slowly uncover all of that so we can again, you know, properly unfold ourselves. Yeah, how much do you believe in that kind of thing? Like the Montauk Project, Philadelphia Experiment, um, you know, like, do you think that the levels of technology in the dark, uh, the dark, the deep state and the, the black budgets, how far have they gotten? Have they done dimensional X, uh, trans submarine jumps and things or <laughs> clones and everything where are they at <laughs> this is well, the place to speculate by the way yes yes <laughs> good <laughs> good so good i would question. say um from what i've seen in terms of the ship stuff so philadelphia or just red you know it sounded convincing but i think i even only read stuff but i can believe yeah. i can imagine something like this happening I would also consider at least some, it's always difficult, you know, where do they try to boast and make up something they can't do? And where are they giving you a documentary? I'm somehow thinking of Hellboy. I'm sure you've seen this. Yeah, 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 yeah. All this strange stuff. And even there, there's just too much residue to think that there is nothing there. And again, applying the idea of satanic reversal, even if they create a fake story that's not really so much exact or correct as it really happened, if there weren't something to begin with that's real, you know, they also couldn't make up a story about it, if you, if you catch my drift. Yeah? In terms of just the negative idea that wants to deceive and so on. Um, even recently, I, unfortunately, I forgot, of course, where I read this, but apparently even quite some quite famous philosopher or even statesman, I think even statesman, I think even some Roosevelt apparently said that evil can never create something original or something like this. And I believe this is even like some metaphysical I remember, principle. I think J.R. Tolkien said um, evil can never uh, create. It can only oh, yeah. Yeah. mutilate or, re- yes. or yeah, Tolkien. Amend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is sure. ironic because Tolkien's the guy who was after the, was it right before? No, it was right, it was right after the um, Swedish-British War. 
right? Which is, you know, they had one and they bombed each other and they blew up a bunch of stuff. He took the la- the best copy of Beowulf, the best copy of the Cotton uh, Codex that had been duplicated and brought to the Swiss Library, translated it. And that's why Lord of the Rings exists, because he's trying to take all of these Beowulf stories and Anglo-Frisian myths and combine them into a way that they got re-released because no one had read them in you know 400 to a thousand years. Right. So in a sense, did he create anything either? I don't know. But, I'll, you know, who does exactly. Know and, and also <laughs> would this maybe there's always a question, you know, who gets the best marketing agency and so on. But I'm sure there's also right. some level where you sense there's some collective resonance, like with Star Wars, even if it wasn't exactly like this. But there must be some themes, at least, or something that we must be connected to. I don't think something otherwise can really get so crazy popular. But yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, uh, C.S. Lewis, J.R. Tolkien, they have the uh, you know conversations on spirituality that led them to become quote unquote Christians. And the book that comes out of that is Damien, right? So the story of uh, Lucifer's son. So a lot of the time you have to wonder what do they mean when they say they have, be- you know, they got drunk in a bar and they became Christians over the conversation. Like, what does that even mean? But I mean, do you think that right and wrong is so clear? Like, is it, you just got to become a member of your local church or whatever it is and just go through with it? Or is it, do you have to have all of these really abstract uh, philosophical truths uh, that complicate your life in order to be a good person. Where what do we got to do on the spiritual level outside of the technological level? Even if that's spiritual technology. Yeah, I'm giving a very so, simple so answer. Ba- so basic. Oh, yeah. both. Go ahead. It starts speaking at okay. the same time. All of us. Would be yes, great. I'm giving a very simple answer first. It's very simple. It's maybe sounds deceivingly simple, but one can develop a discernment for it if one is honest with oneself. And that's very simply, if I have to choose anything uh, do i choose the path of fear or love sounds cheesy but one can discern it and it's really it can be as simple as that and the, of course there's many nice abstract concepts to add on top that's why donnie darko makes fun of it because it's like the truth that makes sense all right rayo so my sorry. i guess mine would be like like basic basic i guess uh, little small l libertarianism not like not the libertarian party stuff but basic liberty you know ba- basic libertarianism is just don't hurt people and don't take their stuff um, go Mises and like that's go I mean home, that's yeah. I think yeah, that's that's kind of I mean that's the foundation beyond that I, I have my own preferences but they're just yeah they're that yeah what do you but you know just on a tangent what do you think about the Mises caucus and everything I mean kind of nice right uh, what do you, or how do you feel about them they have one in U.S. Congress so uh the libertarians or movements uh, getting more and more I'm, Mises I, I don't know if they have one yeah I don't think they, they I don't think they're in Congress yeah. do they they might. They might with no, New Hampshire. No, I don't Hampshire. think the Libertarian Party doesn't win. They don't. Re- they don't really win that much. They're gonna soon with New Hampshire. Okay. The whole plan I, is they're taking over New Hampshire and they're gonna be able to do it. I think by next time. Let's hope. Yeah, possibly with New Hampshire. I don't. I don't. Th- like as far as the Mises Caucus, I think that I think that's more of kind of an internal LP thing. Um, but I don't know. I've I've never been. I so like when I got in, ventured into politics for like six months. Um, it was around, I guess, the 2012 election, and I, I voted once, and I, I did, you know, like I one little informational protest against the war on drugs. And after that point, I kind of just disregarded politics altogether. And uh, even more than that, like as as someone who was committed to solutions to getting people, like actual real solutions to like freedom, like I thought, you know, real real solutions that you know, apolitical, not you know, not where you're not begging someone for your freedom, essentially. Um, so like ever, ever since then, like I and I like I kind of saw like Libertarian Party is like even worse than the Republicans and Democrats because you have these people who want freedom and like they they like they so that, like they want to start doing something about it and then like what's the solution that's offered to them it's like hey more politics but you're gonna lose like every time now um is kind of like at least back at back and those and generally speaking that right. maybe maybe that's gonna change but that's that's how, that's been the trajectory so far so like i've, I've just kind of seen it as kind of as as, as I, I, so yeah I'm, I'm not too much too much into it i'm not as i'm not like a, i don't speak out much against it anymore it's like people can do what they want to yeah. Um, but yeah, I just don't really focus on politics at all. I don't really see any, any, any routes there. Um, for, yeah. For I mean, you get the, the electoral college makes it pretty difficult. Do you, do you see, um, outside of like the, the democratic, uh, process, do you see other legal things that work? I mean, you were saying you're not sure if the sovereign citizenship works with the judge all the time. What are the things that do work for, uh, protection? 
Um, so I guess the, the only couple things that really come to mind at this point, um, one pertains to, I guess, Bonnie was a freedom strategy, but, um, I guess it's called legal interstices. And these are you, these are things, these are legal things that you can do that can make you more invulnerable to the coercion of the state uh, and the servile society. Not, not all of them are like fun or liberating. Like one of the driver's license, like you might have that. So you don't get harassed if you get pulled over. Um, it reduces your vulnerability to increase coercion. Um, if you have that. Um, as one example, like, uh, I guess so if you the, don't the gun have a driver's loophole, license, that, you're better yeah. off, you're saying? Yeah. Well, no, well, um, so in terms of volume, making yourself more invulnerable to coercion, if you have a driver's license, you might be better off because they aren't going to take you to jail. How does that work? Um, How does it work? Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, so I, I guess essentially, um, uh, so I, I guess I, I should trying to understand your questions like so so the the, the reason the way someone would be more invulnerable to coercion um or not as i guess not as vulnerable um is if they did have um like it, that or registration would be a better example probably because what, be is, thing what that is it called what's it the, called the thing mm -hmm. to have you, you said the the thing was what's it called it's a latin term a driver's license oh um so the it's so the the actual oh, it's called a legal interstice legal yeah, interstice. it's just a legal so, loophole is another way to put it. so yeah, what a legal is a loophole is kind what of is the, what is a legal interstice like exactly yeah. So, ba so these are just um, like these are areas within the law that you can that's uh, that that self liberators can use, um, but shouldn't rely upon. Um, so there are things that like in the short term or interim, um, we can use them to make make ourselves more invulnerable to um, to coercion, make ourselves more free. Um, but in the long term, they shouldn't be relied upon. Like for example, the gunshot loophole. They you know loopholes, legal loopholes get closed, so therefore we should rely upon that um, if we're going to rely upon that for like our self defense, for example. Um, so yeah, that'd be that'd be all that it is. How do you um, get a legal exercise, though? Well, how do you get a legal exercise? Um, well, they just they just exist. You just find them. Um, you find you find loophole. You find areas within the law that you can exploit. Um, some of these more some of these more commonly today are, would be more international, um, like the the international legal interstices, like setting up a corporation in a country with um, with uh, you know low capital gains taxes, and then have and only spending your money in somewhere that um, that has it's not a loophole. Um, you know, setting up your life like that. It's a, it's a feature, yes, but it, it's also it's also an. I guess that that that'd be a more broad and legal interstice and maybe way to think about it is just utilizing the existing legal structure and institutions um, to the advantage that we can. Um, is is kind of the, the long and the short. I guess just kind of the overview of it, uh, very briefly. Oh yeah, so like maybe if you have like a license in one state but live in another, and you have a, an address in several states or something like that, something like that. Yes, yes, and, and and a similar one, and it's not necessarily. Um, I guess it doesn't it doesn't mean that like. So the the strategy itself is called uh, proxy merchants, and it's a second realm strategy. And the idea is that um, you want to limit your interactions with people that could coerce you. And in this in this time, um, a lot of that a lot of the time that's that's, that's the state. So um, these would be individuals instead of having um, your property in your name, um, it would be in your proxy merchant's name, so that um, you don't handle interactions with them directly. They don't. They may not even know that you live on the property. For uh, for example. Um, or you may, um, you know, live in an apartment that's um, that you're not registered to, or, um, or you may buy Bitcoin from a a Bitcoin miner instead of um, going through a um, going through an exchange. Um, those would be kind of the ideas: is middlemen to to um, operate between the two realms. One's one of freedom, kind of the second realm, and then the first realm, one of the the you know the, the fiat government sort of thing. Can you create a? Uh, can you? I mean, I guess you can. Right? I was gonna say, can you create a person um, legally that can represent yourself? But I guess you could. You just create a corporation, eh? So, could you? You could create a corporation and have floating uh, stocks like the Panama Papers did, so that whoever has all the stocks shows up. They're the ones who own the corporation. That's not bad. Yeah, I suppose trust would be another common um, legal interstice um, way to protect assets uh, from the state. Yeah, it would certainly be another avenue i don't know much about it i know um bill cooper talked about a specific type of trust in the 90s um that was a really a really good one but i don't really remember that I'm, I'm not in a position where i need to really look into trust so um yeah <laughs> but it might be might be possible for somebody what do yeah, you say oh, just just to give the europe or austrian perspective at least in austria it's possible very easily to do something it would be called an association or foundation but basically costs like 30 bucks to set up. <laughs> and people can even use this if they do it wisely to kind of protect their assets. So it's kind of like the, you know, 501c3 for poor people or something like that. But here at least technically anyone can in some ways do this, which then of course kind of protects you if you ever get into trouble or whatever, or if people seek to extract wealth from you. 
and it's properly managed and transferred legally, you know, just like the big boys are doing with all their foundations. This can help in some cases, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyhow, with the whole thing, you know, with the person and personhood, I'm sure you know about this, the legalese and what is my legal self, what is my real self, why are they addressing me in all caps, why I'm a slave, you know, according to the system. It's a mess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that makes me wonder because if, if you've got this legal person, can you create another legal person just by saying it or do you? is it required to go through the paperwork and is that what your birth certificate is? It's uh, incorporating you, right? <clears throat> So I guess the only other thing I can think of in, in this in this regard in terms of, you know, like creating identities or whatever, I don't think it's really the angle that you're going on. But there was an old I don't think it would work in today's day and age necessarily the way that the author described it. But there's there are a couple of books back in the 80s called The Paper Trip. And it was about how to legally like or not how to, how to legally, but how to actually like create multiple identities. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily possible anymore. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Difficult. Um, and, and also in terms of uh, government control of personhood. The idea that your social security is linked to um, value that you can get out. Do you know anything about that? The idea that you can get money out of, uh, you know, the slave masters for owning you. Is that real? <clears throat> I've heard about it. Yeah. But uh, I, don't, I haven't really seen anyone um, with six. Have, have, I haven't seen anyone demonstrate its efficacy yet. Um, yeah. So until then, like, uh, you know, yeah, until then, I'm, I'm, I hope I see it. I'd, I'd love to cash in if I can. Right. I've, I've heard about them paying debts and stuff too. Like, but yeah, again, I've never seen any, I, I've never seen it actually done before. I've seen more of these people end up in prison than I have like of actual successes. Yeah, that's the problem. Aren't there some <laughs> other conspiracies floating around claiming that whoever owns this largest Bitcoin wallet or whatever, maybe the US government, you know, in a secret plan by the Fed to the one that's lost start the economy or whatever, you know, like whatever huge amount there is or whatever they there took the box. A... I don't know. There was, yeah, that's true. Okay, well. What was the thing I just saw? Um, the so there's the bill. There's the Elon Musk moving Bitcoin. There's of course the Mt. Gox story of the Bitcoin being stolen. There's something like a hundred million Bitcoins are lost forever. Uh, and I just was watching Danny Long's show, or didn't sorry Danny um, Danny Pol Polishchuk. Sorry, um, Ryan Long's buddy. Uh, Danny's got a show called Low Value Mail. And in low value mail, there was he was talking about a friend of his who is the guy who lost that card that has like 30, 300 trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin on it. It was like 700 Bitcoin at the height of the value or something like that. So he knows that guy as well. So I think there are, you know, realistically, there are a lot of people that have lost coin. And because of the way BTC works, they're supposedly lost forever. But I wonder how true that is, because I think those are going to be the things that they're going to figure out how to find the. Uh, old signs for and exactly and here i want to know if there will ultimately be a technical solution or maybe tech assisted because what i had been thinking for quite some time already is oh well maybe then just you know intuition will gift some psychics the right information you know and they'll because you need to be exact with the key right but yeah it's just the key you know so <laughs> but there's only so many times be given, right? there's only so many times you can try the key i think that's the thing he's got one oh. more Okay. try or something like that okay and so they can't figure out how to duplicate okay because it, it's a particularly it. secure device because otherwise you would have infinite attempts i guess no if right I'm correct yeah, yeah i think that's the deal yeah I'm, for the most part yes yeah. um sticky mark sends five pounds thank you britain we appreciate all that you do uh what do you think about in terms of the world itself uh is it is it more of if someone says, you know, there are people working on trying to create these solutions that you're talking about, uh, and we're not going to call it government anymore, we're going to call it this alliance of corporations and everything like that. How is it better than the new world order as a government if it's just an alliance of, of these companies and, you know, um, decentralized blockchain, uh, corp, you know, our own people, but eventually is it going to end up just as bad? So, so basically, I mean, I, I, I can't necessarily foresee the future, but what I do know is that um, around 2020, I saw that like for freedom minded individuals, um, like there, there really wasn't, a, there, uh, to me, I really didn't see a choice. I, I, I got goats and lambs and started to, you know, start to take my, my personal responsibility very seriously. Um, so like, um, so I guess that's, that's, that's one angle that like, if we're, I mean, it's, it's, I, I, if it might, might just be a necessity, but um, at the same time, um, 
I guess the the difference between the between this network is what it's founded upon, and uh, um, it's yeah founded upon I guess truth, peace, and, and volunteers. People can go to paznia.com forward slash sign and look at the the Paznia Constitution, um, which uh, um, basically it's it's very very it's yeah it's it's very short, um, and uh, it's uh yeah it just shows the the the, the few principles that uh, you know we align with as as a network, and um, so it's the overall network, and then we've got uh, um, other 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 territories, uh, what they call themselves. Um, but, uh, how do we, how do we know it won't deteriorate into something much like it is now? I mean, I can't perceive that, but what I do know is like, I, I know these individuals, I, I talk to them. I've, I've, I've known a lot of them personally for you know, a handful of years. Um, I, uh, I've vetted them very, very thoroughly, you know, just by, by knowing them. Um, and, uh, I, I, they're, I, as far as I'm concerned, they're, you know, some of the, some of the best, best folks out there, um, at least these people in physical space and time. So, um, about, I think that's really the me- mechanisms yeah. also, let's say that everybody gets killed in a bus cr- or, uh, you know, but, but, um, the, the crickets die in a plane crash kind of a thing. Um, what happens to the system itself? Is the system able to, you know, can the system deal with it? Can the system fix it? Kick out the bugs? That's, that's the goal. Yeah. That's, that's the eventual goal. Yeah. If it's, if it's going to be a decentralized network, then any, any, you know, one or few nodes should be able to go offline per se, and it shouldn't make a difference too much of a difference to the entire network. Um, we're not there yet. It's been, only been a couple of years. Um, and, uh, I mean, we've got, you know, um, at least a handful of Paznias around the world. So, um, I mean, we're, we're, we're working towards it. I'm working towards it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, you, you bring up good points, um, stuff that I've kind of thought about too, but, um, I, I kind of, at this point, I'm looking at short term, short, to, short to midterm solution because I'm not quite sure how the world's going to look in 10 years. So, um, I'm not really like, I guess much in the, in the mindset of long-term plan. I'm, n- I'm not a long-term planner anyway, but especially now, um, where like, I don't know where I'm going to be next year, let alone in like 10 years, you know? So, um, yeah, good points, but, um, I guess stuff that I'm, I'm not like, I guess, um, not broaching, um, entirely seriously at this point yet. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and again, Blake Lemoyne said something similar and it's, it, well, really it's a Ray Kurzweil kind of quote that the singularity is the point where there's just so many more possibilities that it's impossible to, you know, pinpoint where a traje- traje- trajectory, because we're trying to get across any, which way it could happen. There's just so many more options that open up all of a sudden than we're open before right so it's it is it is nearly impossible um do you think that systems that have been built from evil can you know uh somehow be corrected or do they have to just be fully replaced i think like way earlier in the process maybe it could be salvaged um but I, I, I mean, that's why that's why I'm building, you know, the second round network is it's like a, that I, I kind of see that society is, 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 is gone. And we're like we're tr- trying to, you know, trying to get the last few folks that we can and we're just going to build and do what we what, what we can do, what we can do and what we want to do. Um, See, so yeah, I guess that would uh, that's what I can offer. Yeah, for sure. Well, I really appreciate Rayo that you came on. This has been pretty fun. And we got to definitely look more into uh, the the situation with the ghost pad right the ghost pads the name of the book and and how things are um, working with yeah. that so I, i'm excited to see also that and then let us know as time goes on with the self uh, liberation movement you know as you know if, if things come up we'd be happy to talk more right on man well it was uh, it was an honor to chat i've been following your stuff for for uh, for about a year exertus and i, I really really doubt, find a lot of value in some of your conversations uh the listeners yeah. haven't checked out the conversation with jeremiah that one in particular i've listened to it like a half dozen times i'm still gathering you know really important stuff so dude jeremiah um, you're, you're doing a lot you're, you're having a lot of important conversations so i appreciate you too man dude yeah absolutely thank you again for being here and Raphael. You know, let's uh let's set this up again we'll do it i guess you said you might not be here next week raf because you're going to a, a show yeah 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 Exactly. We'll make something cool. We'll make something cool happen.
long as I'm in this Oval Office. 